Hi, this is Vaughan at Wesco Bell Pottery in La Have, Nova Scotia. This is February 23rd, maybe 24. I don't keep track of the date. Uh, and uh, it is so gorgeous. I had just opened the studio doors up today because this is warm. I mean, here you go. This is my deck. There's my studio door. So this is just too much to be to be missed. So hopefully a lot of the guys watching these videos one day can visit Nova Scotia because this is just an unbelievable place. And that's Riverport I've shown you in other videos. Very bright day, hot and sunny. I don't I have short sleeves on. It's not even cold. I think probably about, <laughs> you'll laugh, 55 degrees, is, it feels like something like that. Anyway, just wanted to show you that before I get onto the videos. Good morning. I just showed you a beautiful video. We have to be in a great mood now, and uh, this is just spectacular. But even more so, I did a, a change in firing here. Uh, with a shorter soak uh, and a six degree, no, seven degree lower peak temperature. Um, so let's see what happened. Remember I said the things were running too much down. So um, I'm not expecting much from my Randy's Red because that likes the long soak and also likes the thing. So there's my first Randy's Red goes back to brown. So that'll have to be refired. Um, so that was my, um, somebody asked me if I definitely had to soak and this was my test to see and no red, not even on the inside. So this likes an hour soak at 22.32 and an hour soak at 17.50, rapid cool down from 22.32 to 17.50. So we're confirmed and that you get brown, dull brown with Randy's red. So you do, you know, all those tests were worth it, but Tenbaku Gold loves that. So let's see what happened. Slower, so, slower cooling. This was 125 degrees an hour, down from 2232 to 1750 with another hour soak. Look at the crystals in that. Tenbaku Gold. It ran a little bit just there, but that won't hurt. But look at that. The crystals are just everywhere. I mean, that's what happens. The Tenbaku Gold, you can, you, you can time it, I guess, and see. But we now know that Tenbaku Gold, slow, slow soak, slow cool, slightly lower temperature. It still sits flat. This one didn't run as much. See, there's how I fire them with the stilts on the inside on a little kiln prop. But look at that. We've got just the right amount of running, so it makes it interesting. But the Tenbaku Gold is just gold. So what did the other colors do? Let's see. This was my Tomato Red. We should put the light on. Here we go. Oh, and then I've got to shield it. This is the tomato red. And I had my variegated blue dipped over the top. So we've still got some red with the tomato red. But not as much as usual. So both of those, I think you're going to have to fire on their own. Boy, I feel like I'm on stage. That light is so bright. So, sea foam. It's good. So I had some problem with the seafoam pieces dunting. Um, this one is slightly lower temperature now, and this one hasn't dunted. So, um, so I think it could be, I'm not sure if I used my white stoneware or B-mix with this either, so I, I would still have to test to confirm. But these are the butter dishes. So another seafoam piece, and I dipped my blue over the top of the sea foam there.
We're only talking seven degrees difference. And uh, let's see what we have. Yep, and even the gray, this is 125 degrees cooling. If you look at my other videos with the mouse gray, this is now totally opaque. So it's crystallized as well. And the oatmeal ran into it the way I like the oatmeal to do without running to the rim. But um, I'm going to do a series of videos on oatmeals because a lot of people want to know how to do oatmeals. This, it, I've just said it before, it's basically add tin or titanium dioxide. I add both to the same glaze. Um, oh, and here's the other thing. I'm now kiln bat washing my kiln props to stop them sticking to the kiln shells and it works. So, um, this is a glaze I haven't shown you before. This is in the book, Understanding Cone 6 Glazes. It is a rutile green, um, and I add a little bit extra copper carbonate than the recipe says, but basically it's a sort of a greenish yellow which is nice, it's semi-transparent with oatmeal on the top. Yeah, so what I'm saying, you know, just about 7% tin oxide, which is a very expensive glaze then. So I, I do it set 3.5% tin oxide, 3.5% titanium dioxide, and add it to any satin matte base. I mean, it, there's just not that much. But I'm going to experiment with David Leach 2, DL2. I have a recipe for that cone eight and I'm going to try and lower the firing temperature because satin mats at cone eight it may be quite glossy but if you fire it two cones lower it may well be a oatmeal anyway so because um, you're putting it usually over the top of other pieces when you do the oatmeal because it makes those crystals well better for those those are really pretty I these are the pieces I threw in that video on vase uh, tall drinking glasses Two of them so that it's very bright blue in the book of my oatmeal and then I have a dark blue which is actually just cobalt oxide in a clear glaze and it gives me a dark blue transparent so I've got three glazes on there yeah so all my props now not as they're not sticking to the kiln shelf and I was getting this awful Edgy's breaking off all the kiln props on these new Advancer shelves. I'm not quite sure. The Advancer shelves are perfect. I mean, they don't, nothing sticks to them. But for some reason, the kiln props were. So, um, and these ones that haven't bat washed yet. I think it's the weight of all the pieces on the actual shelves all the way down that makes them increase the likelihood that they're going to stick the props to the kiln shelves. Uh, Bright blue with the dark blue over the top, and that was it. I didn't do any oatmeal on this one, so it gives you that different, deeper, darker blue. And I did do oatmeal on the bird. All right. I've got three different videos on the go at the moment. Um, yeah, I wobbled that, but nothing stuck to it anyway. There's the little bit of kiln prop. And it's no, there's nothing, you don't feel it, but you can see it. That's the bat wash, I should say, not the Well, it's both, I suppose. This one is the bars. You can just use that and it rubs it all off. So then we've got some actual chip, I've uh, got some little bowls here. Um, and this is the Tenmuku Gold with oatmeal and my red, which is the raspberry in that book, Understanding Cone Six Glazes. The Tenmuku Gold loves this slow cool. These are the noodle bowls. Put chopsticks across basically. But the Tenmuku Gold is what this this firing was all about. To see whether oh this one ran a lot. Um look at the oh yeah on the outside it ran. I'll have to grind this one. Um 
And this was a slightly lower firing, remember, so... Oh, we're in the shadow. But I will have to grind that one. Probably I dipped it too long. Now this is interesting, this is a commission. <laughs> a dog ball. Somebody sent me the name of a dog ball and asked me to make three of them for them. So I've got three of these. And it's a narrow top, so I'm not quite sure why the dog has to have a narrow top. Maybe he has a long snout. This is one of the reasons I was doing this firing the way it was, because I wanted to make sure I can reproduce that. That's the... That's my uh, yellow oatmeal over the top of the mouse grey, and I wanted to get that um, striping effect. And the timing was good on this one. So it ran all the way down. You see, you've got, the timing is just going to have to be... I'm going to have to write all this down off this program on this kiln. Because it's doing it perfectly there. But of course, if you dip a piece in a bucket of glaze, you dip for half a second, one second, two, you know, whatever number of seconds, thickness of glazing, it gets thicker. There's my butter dishes. This shelf I will have to knock the, the glaze off there, it comes off really easy. Okay, this was a large platter with a chip and dip. I, this was one of the ones probably in the video that I did a while back. Bright blue, dark blue and oatmeal. And then, oh, oh, look at that. This was a, one of the disfigured bowls, you can see. I punched in with my fingers in a vertical fashion while I was, you know, got the big piece on the wheel. So you've got all sorts of dents in the clay on this one, but it's making the glaze run like that in such a specific way. So this is one of the technical gold uh, tea bowls that I did, but that one is a special piece because I didn't do any more like that. And then you've got Totally reproducible at this firing schedule, the Tiger Stripe, I was calling it. And it's doing them on all of the pieces. Just enough running so it didn't touch the bottom. Could I do that again? Who knows? This is the one that I've, I've sent to ship, oh sorry, I've just shipped a bunch of these out. Um, there you go. That's why I've made so many of them again, but look how different. This one um, didn't have the fluting, I guess. No, that, well, this it's very subtle fluting on that one. This one was a little deeper fluting. So that's the difference between the two. But look at the Tenmaku gold, way more crystals than the other ones. And there's another with the tomato red. So tomato red is not a washout in this firing schedule, but the Randy's red is. In actual fact, that's quite kind of a nice combination. Tomato red probably with my very, I usually use variegated blue and oatmeal over the browns, they always look good. And another tiger stripe. And then I did, which I glaze, as I said, I don't use this very often, but it's the actual rutile green. I call it rutile green. It's, it's copper carbonate and rutile in the glaze base that's that's for that floating blue recipe and then some fluting 
it's a subtle sort of sea green, I would call that. And I got a bunch of these. Because we live on the ocean, people always want blues around here or bluey greens. I think that um, wherever you live, you're going to have that color response because people decorate their houses in different ways. And And this is a, uh, a special order. Somebody wanted a set of these noodle bowls. And this is, I have a, a, a green which I can never reproduce because I combined a couple of glazes together. But it's a green that I put over my oatmeals and it crystallizes like this if you slow cool it, which is really pretty. It's just oatmeal and green where they meet in the middle, you get those browns. It's a beautiful combination. I don't think I'll ever be able to reproduce this, but fortunately I have about 10 gallons of it. But it is a beautiful combination. So I have a bunch of little noodle bowls. And they're all doing that, that running, which is very pretty. I think the guy's going to be very happy about these. He only wanted one of them, so if you wanted one, just let me know. And then, whew, all the way to the bottom, look at this. All those to the very bottom, but that's running, so. Mouse gray with an oatmeal over the top. And I had yellow stain to the oatmeal. There's so many yellow stains, you can just play with those. I mean, I've got two yellow stains, and um, so many yellow stains and so little time. That's what potters always say, because there's so much to learn. I bought a tenor guitar yesterday, so I'm going to try learning that. I can actually, I have very chubby hands, um, so it's hard for me to reach a real guitar, but the tenor guitar is a narrow neck. I love these Tenmaku ones, and this was the best firing yet. And there's the tomato red with the variegated blue and the oatmeal as well. And I got two more and another rutile one here. Okay, so that's the quick kiln unpack, 15 minutes just over. Good morning, this is Vaughan, Westcott Belt Pottery again, another kiln. Um, this one actually, I'm going to show you this, I put two lids on top of my kilns when I'm doing that longer soak. It's a little heavy, so you may not be able to do that. Um, but it, extra insulation basically for a firing that, that I'm soaking. Um, where are we at here? 142 the temperature Fahrenheit, so that's just about right. Um, so these are the bottoms to the pieces that I did yesterday that I showed unloading in that kiln. Um, and this is the mouse gray that fits over these pieces. Uh, and basically, I was trying a couple of different firing cycles here, and they both work. This is the long soak again. So basically, still cone 6, 22, 30, 22, 25 this time. Um, that one was 22, 25 as well. Uh, this one was a slightly longer soak at top temperature, um, and it looks like it did pretty good. So. Um, so basically, you've got the, the gray. I just slip trailed a bit of my oatmeal in a spiral there. Um, but these are tiny little butter dishes, basically. So uh, uh, I was throwing these last night. Uh, I realized I didn't have any of my little turquoise tea bowls left, which is interesting. Um, and the oatmeal that I put over the top on these ones, I tried it a different way around. 
and it's a little less oatmeal-y, uh, but there's a hint of yellow in those, so... Um, Uh, the Tenmachu Gold work. The turquoise always works. Uh, it's a it's a semi matte and opaque. Um, oh, I don't have the one of those out. <coughs> now this was half an hour soak, and the Randy's Red went a little redder. These are the ones I did yesterday, uh, which are more brown, and that was the shorter soak. Uh, so basically, Randy's Red just tends to get. Um, he needs to go to 2232 and needs to have a full hour soak at top temperature. I have a little kiln I'm unloading uh, and that one will be much more red I'm sure because I had the full hour soak. But that won't be unloaded till tomorrow. But look at the Tenmaku Gold. And that's with a bit of my oatmeal over it as well. But the Tenmaku Gold works really beautifully. little butter dish. I'm making some bigger butter dishes today and I'll do a video of those eventually. Yeah, look at that. This kiln shaft lifted right up because of the... Uh, these things are slippery sometimes to put down because they're so smooth, those new kiln shelves. By, by kiln washing my props, the shelves are not sticking at all anymore. And I'm not, I just end up with a little bit of the kiln wash left on the shelf, but that's a powder, you know, so um, more rutile green. I had these come out yesterday. So a little butter. And it goes, if you look closely, it does go that yellowy green color. And it's it, sometimes it will go luminescent, almost, um, it's a funny grayish green, I guess you would call it. But look how it's yellow on one side and green on the other. And when you dip a piece in the glaze, you always got one side where it's dripping off. So glaze runs over to that side quite a bit. And that's what I think that's about. It goes thicker on one side and gets more green. The turquoise. And the green. My cat is yelling because he wants to go upstairs. My wife won't let him because she has painting laying out on the floor. any of those ones out. There's the blue one out. That blue is really pretty, isn't it? Floating blue, I think it's called in the book. But I have my dark blue over the top of it as well, which was just a clear glaze that I put cobalt oxide in. So there should be some tops for these somewhere deep down. Oh, that's right, I have my... Somebody commissioned me to do some paintings of lavender. And they and I sold a bunch of mugs. I think I might have shown you those in a previous video. But now I'm getting orders. And I'm not really known for... It's just a Japanese brush, brush painting. Um, but anyway, these are new pieces that I've never done before. Um, maybe they'll become a... It's a nice distraction to do some different, something different. I was saying that the other day, develop something different and all that. And it's spring and flowers, so I should add some little yellow flowers in the bottom. So I might do that. My wife is the painter here. And then they wanted to chip and dip. It's very pretty. And these hang on the wall, remember? So uh, you put picture wire around the groove with a little loop in it and you can hang them on the wall and nobody sees how it's hanging. So that would look very pretty hanging on the wall. And then I painted it around the bowl too. So that's a new, for me. I just ordered a bunch of that clay. So, um, and then I had a shop, local shop. And this has happened twice in the last two weeks. Who just wanted some mugs and all that. So, um, there you go. So turquoise mugs with that kind of beachy look around the top. And there's a bunch of these in here. Um, I'm working on a beer tankard commission at the moment. Where's my stone prop? Sometimes you have to tap the props off the bottom of these. I always have to grind the bottoms of these. 
but um, so it's that beach and sand kind of look. Sometimes they'll come off really easily, and other times you just have to tap to get it off. But, um, it all depends on the glaze. Um, the thinner the glaze, obviously, the easier the props will come off. I'm going to put them down and take them back to this. Anyway, I've got a, an order for 200 potential beer tankers. Between 100 and 200 they, they want me to do, so it looks like I'm going to get that order. And that's when I'm throwing them to size, which is what I've shown in the video. Oh, I didn't look. Look, at that. I didn't bat wash the end that was touching the kiln shelf. So that shows it came off the one it was sitting on. So I forgot to do that one. Okay, so we have the tops of the. Um, I have to get those kiln props out. Um, the other color. of the butter dishes. So I make these, if you lift them that way, they slip right into your fingers, so you have to lift them with the tail and the beak. Couple more of those. And a bunch more. I'll skip over these, because they're just the same. Everyone's the same. Almost, this thrown individually, that, that the colouring she wanted, the blue on the bottom, and then the yellowy top. So they're basically, there's the kiln props on the bottom, with the yellowy top on the turquoise. It's supposed to look like the beach. And when I fire the little butter dishes, of course you have to hold it up. So that's what that kiln prop is for, just to hold it up above the shelf. So this one, I think I did the, yep, nothing sticking on that one. Oh yes, these are nice. Except I'm gonna have to grind the bottom of it again. When they run like this, they're spectacular. I mean, that is just so beautiful. But next time, I am not gonna dip the outside in that. I'll leave it gray and just go for the center like that. But look at that, that's luscious. No, so I can grind the bottom of that one and see. Let's see if this one did it too. I think it did as well. Yeah, it ran as well. But um, so the make note, it, even though it's beautiful on the outside, you can't do it on the outside. But you can do it on the inside, and that is really beautiful. So I've got some grinding to do on those two. And they were fired with backwashed shelves, um, but they lifted off easily because I had a thick layer of backwash. And another one of those, I think you've seen these come out of the kiln as well. That's a pretty, it's that new seafoam and matte turquoise that I'm playing with. It's just a new glaze um, that I have just decided to play with. It doesn't like the B-mix play, it seems. I'm not sure what this one was. I think this was the B-Mix anyway. But um, I've had some pieces do dunting, which is cracking. And all. But um, alrighty, that's the kiln I'm firing, unpacking. Alright, talk to you later. Thanks for joining me.